Hello, this is lesson 10, uh, part 2 of solar collectors and solar water heaters. Uh, if you remember, in lesson 9, uh, last week, we learned about solar thermal collectors, different type of, types of solar thermal collectors, and uh, different types of solar water heaters, which is uh, solar collector plus the tank and other uh, devices which may be uh, in the system. Today we will be more familiar with heat transfer analysis and technical specifications of solar thermal collectors as you see in their data sheets. Uh, if you want to know more about the heat transfer uh, basics of flat plate collectors, uh, I refer you to chapter 6 of our textbook. Chapter 6 is a complete uh, review of the heat transfer aspects of solar thermal collectors, either liquid uh, collectors or air collectors. So if you want to have more information about the topic of today, uh, please read uh, chapter 6 of the textbook. Uh, I just want uh, to remind you that flat plate solar collectors um, are, as you can see here, the components are shown here. From the top, starting from the top, number one is the solar glass. You remember that it was a low iron glass uh, to transmit more sunlight. Uh, number two, uh, the, the, as you can see, is an absorber plate, uh, which may be aluminum or copper. Uh, just uh, dark colored or uh, with selective coating to have more absorptance and less emissivity. Uh, generally the distance between one and two, the solar glass and uh, the absorber plate is in the order of centimeters, maybe three centimeters or some, some less or more. Uh, then there are the pipes. Uh, which uh, are welded to the absorber plate either by ultrasonic or laser welding then number four is the profile frame of the collector and uh, number five at the back is the insulation which may be rock wool or other materials this is a solar thermal collector but uh, today we want to talk more about the heat transfer analysis of the collector so let's have an energy balance of the flat plate solar collector the picture here shows it in a simple form um, uh, red color here is the absorbed solar radiation by absorber plate then there are some losses from the collector from the top as you can see here from the back surface of the collector and from the edges uh, while they, it may be negligible but it exists so there are heat losses from different uh, sides of the collector and finally the difference between the absorbed solar radiation by absorber plate and total heat loss you can uh, calculate the useful energy as shown in the bottom right corner of the slide useful energy is absorbed solar radiation by absorber plate minus total heat loss so in order to calculate the useful energy which is our aim finally you should calculate absorbed solar radiation you should calculate total heat loss and then subtract to find the useful energy also having these all you can calculate the collector efficiency which is the useful energy as defined in the previous slide divided by the input energy which is the collector area AC is the collector area multiplied by the incident solar radiation on collector surface. Please note that while in calculating QU, we use the solar radiation absorbed by the plate, which is different from uh, from the uh, from the uh, absorbed solar radiation by the plate is different with the solar radiation which is hitting on the collector surface. I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, here at the denominator we use the incident solar radiation on the collector surface multiplied by collector area just one point here is that collector area should be defined clearly 
because it may be gross area which is the whole area aperture area which is the glass or the, the area which the light transmits through it or the absorber plate area here I uh, show you these uh, three surfaces for example here you can see collector area or gross area which is back to back of the collector absorber area which is the area of the absorber plate the white plate shown here and the aperture area uh, which uh, sh shows you here the aperture where the light passes so be careful when you are either calculating the collector efficiency or using the collector efficiency to calculate uh, to calculate useful energy you should know what uh, which area you should use in this formula so uh, by this formula you can calculate the, the efficiency of the collector output divided by input but actually there are three pathways in my opinion in studying solar thermal collectors and using them the first is from a researcher viewpoint for example for us in university doing research or for you as a student doing your master thesis or after that doing a specific research the second is from a manufacturer or test laboratory viewpoint for example suppose that you are a manufacturer of flat plate collectors the 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 study path for thermal co solar collector is different for the manufacturer and uh, finally from an engineer viewpoint i just uh, want to emphasize that there is no very clear borderline between these three but uh, but if you classify it in this way it it helps you to do the to do the right job actually for what you are doing if you are a researcher generally researchers determine efficiency and useful energy by modeling and heat transfer analysis as you can see here for example and finally calculate the useful energy calculate the efficiency and so on uh, suppose that uh, this is our previous collector as I told you before we have three arrows the red one is the absorbed solar radiation by absorber plate the black one is the total heat loss by convection and radiation from top back and sides and finally useful energy is the green one which can be calculated by the formula at the top of the page okay in order to do the calculation or do uh, or make a research as I told you before you should calculate uh, the red one and the black one to calculate the uh, the green one now let's uh, start by the red one how to find this absorbed solar radiation by the absorber plate how to find absorbed solar radiation by the absorber plate the answer is here yeah. find the incident solar radiation on tilted surface okay you know how to find it from chapter 2 because it was your homework also to calculate the incident solar radiation on a tilted surface but please note that this is GT and not the the energy which the absorber plate here receives in this picture this one shows the glass cover maybe one or two and the, the, the dark one here the thick uh, line here shows the absorber plate as you can see when the solar radiation hits the glass surface part of it will be reflected and what you have at the back or bottom is GT multiplied by tau which is the transmissivity of the glass cover again when this reaches uh, the absorber plate part of it will be absorbed but other parts will be reflected back again how 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 many percentage of this radiation will be absorbed by the absorber plate it is the product tau gt multiplied by alpha what is alpha alpha is the absorptivity of the absorber plate so number two multiply by transmittance of glass cover and absorptance of the absorber plate which is tau alpha i shown it here if you remember in chapter two we calculate the, uh, the it which uh, uh, which we use instead of gt also here are the same 
Uh, you may remember that it was uh, in three parts. This is the effect of direct radiation, this is the effect of diffuse, and uh, the last is the effect of ground reflected radiation. As I uh, as you can see here, the radiation, this radiation, IT, should pass the glazing one in, uh, or in some cases, two layers, and the airspace to reach the absorber plate. So, if you want to calculate uh, what you have on the absorber plate, you should multiply the previous equation, equation 215.1, by tau alpha, the product of tau alpha, which, as I told you before here, is the product of transmittance of the glass and absorptance of the absorber plate. Actually, tau alpha is a combined parameter for absorber cover uh, combination, actually. The, the important point here is that the product for beam radiation, for diffuse radiation, and from, for ground reflected radiation are different. In order to know more about that, you can uh, go to chapter 5, 9 and know more about it. Here I have shown it in a bigger size to enable you to understand what is happening here. As I told you before, the product is called transmittance absorptance product and this product is a property of cover absorber combination here by cover i mean the glass cover or glazing glass cover glazing cover are the same have the same meaning in our nomenclature okay now we understood how to find the absorbed energy the second step is to find the heat loss from the collector. The, the qu question is how to find heat loss from the collector. The answer is here. The first, specify the surface where heat will be lost. For example, top surface, for example, back surface, or the sides. Then use correlations available for each. What are these correlations? The correlations are in your book and uh, I refer you to the book to know more about that but there are experimental relations for each of them finally if you consider the collector as a black box which is at a temperature of Tp for example plate temperature here as an example as, a, as an average sorry and uh, in 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 uh, uh, in the ambient air, for example, with the temperature of Ta, then the total heat loss will be UL, which is the total heat loss coefficient, multiplied by collector area, multiplied by Tp minus Ta. Tp is the average plate temperature, Ta is the ambient temperature. Or, as you may remember from basic heat transfer, uh, ULAC may be shown by 1 over RL where R is the total resistance for heat loss okay uh, I've shown you here uh, the flat plate collector in simple uh, a simple schedule I sh I've shown here here the top is the glass cover this one the darker one is the absorber plate where tubes uh, are, um, are 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 welded to the plate uh, here is the insulation i'm sorry this is wrong actually there is no need for this arrow because the, the here actually from this the back surface collector back surface to the absorber plate is filled with insulation so do not consider this arrow i will delete it in my pdf when i feel sent to you okay uh, the absorber plate uh, transfer heat heat will be transferred from the absorber plate to the ambient air at the top to the ambient air at the bottom and to the ambient air at the edge of the collector okay uh, this is the path for the top side from the absorber plate to the glass cover and from the glass cover to the ambient air this is the path for the back side from the absorber plate to the back side of the collector and from the back side of the collector to the ambient air and there is also a small heat transfer to the to the edge if you remember uh, 
uh, from basic heat transfer. In order to model this collector, you should, or any heat transfer process, you should draw the thermal network, uh, the thermal network for the picture I've shown you in the previous slide is shown here. This is the collector plate. It starts from the left picture here, which is the heat transfer network. This is the collector plate. This is the top side. This is the bottom side. You can refer yourself to the previous slide when studying this. Um, here is the glass cover. So there is a heat transfer between the plate and the glass cover. The type of heat transfer is both a radiation and a convection each have its own resistance then you have uh, heat transfer from the glass cover to the ambient uh, same here you have the heat transfer from the from the uh, from the absorber plate to the back of the collector through the insulation and uh, you know certainly that this is conduction heat transfer and this is the resistance for conduction from the back side to the ambient air, again, you have a combined heat transfer based on radiation and convection. So you can combine these together, equivalent resistance, here the same, here the same, here the same. And then you have two parallel paths. Again, you can combine these and this path, add just add these together to have the equivalent for the sub top side, add these together to have the equivalent for the bottom side, and then um, find the resultant resistance which is shown here so in simple uh, in a simple uh, case you should you can show the collector network uh, very simply as a as a dot here where s which is the absorbed solar radiation is input this is the heat loss from the collector and finally q useful will be remained the three uh, the three parts of the heat loss is shown here you top you bottom and you edge you bottom or back you can say and for each you can see that there are formulas as i shown here for details see section 64 of the textbook uh, to know how these equations are tried okay now you have all these terms the red one the black one just put in the above equation substituting the formula which we uh, we found for the red arrow and for the black arrow putting here you can find the useful energy which is shown here useful energy is collector area multiplied by the incident solar radiation multiplied by the product minus ul which you remember that ul is the top of these heat transfer coefficients plate temperature minus ta also you know that it can be shown in a simple form by the mass flow rate of water flowing through the collector, Cp, specific heat, and To, outside temperature, minus inside inlet temperature, outlet temperature, minus inlet temperature. The problem here with the formula at the bottom of the page is that is a plate temperature here in this formula is generally unknown in a Bauer equation. Then a factor Fr is introduced which converts the equation in the following form which is more convenient as you can see by multiplying uh, FR here which is shown here and called the heat removal factor you can write the equation or rewrite the equation in this form as you can see here instead of plate temperature you have inlet temperature and anyone knows what is the inlet temperature to the collector when you are doing for example a research or something like this the inlet temperature to the collector is known the ambient temperature is known ul can be calculated this is known from chapter 2 this is known for the combination ac is known just you should be careful about gross area absorber area and aperture area and fr is calculated by the formula shown here which is the heat removal factor. In this equation, F prime is also collector efficiency factor, which you can find the formula in chapter six of the textbook. Okay, summarizing what we said, we can calculate the useful energy, and when the useful energy is calculated, just put it here in the formula which we had before, useful energy divided by the incident energy, and you can calculate the efficiency now we have all terms in above equation substituting the value and rearranging you have the efficiency equation of the collector which is the 
which is the the, the product the, the 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 sorry the ratio of QU useful energy to input energy. The equation can also be written in this form if you multiplied FR by each term. This the first term is FR tau alpha minus FR UL I the product shown here. Generally in collector terminology the curve of uh, eta which is the efficiency is drawn with respect to this ratio which is the inlet minus uh, ambient temperature divided by gt as you can see here uh, it is ti inlet temperature to the collector ambient temperature divided by solar radiation or irradiance actually which uh, you may remember that the unit was watt per square meter if you draw it you can see that it has an intercept which is when uh, when uh, tfi is equal to a the difference is zero this part will be zero so the intercept will be fr tau alpha which is here actually it is named the collector efficiency sometimes but you can see that when there is a difference between temperature inlet to the collector and ambient air then the collector efficiency will be decreased as you can see here with the slope frul so a slope of the collector is fr multiplied by ul and as you can see as the collector heat loss ul is increased the slope of the curve will be also increased so when you compare two collectors and see that one of them has a more a slope you can say that the heat loss of the collector with more a slope is more the collector which has less a slope has less heat loss coefficient this is very important in general collector efficiency can be shown here as you can see here the uh, the collector efficiency starts somewhere here not uh, not at 100 percent the reason is that you have an optical efficiency which is generally not exactly but approximately independent of the temp the, the normalized uh, uh, temperature normalized temperature ratio is ti minus ta over gt so the optical loss is independent of that then you have a thermal loss as you can see thermal loss will be increased by this parameter why because when the difference between the collector temperature and the ambient temperature increases then the heat loss uh, you can say certainly that will be increased so the thermal loss as you can see will be increased it is not exactly linear because when the, the temperature difference is increased then radiation effects will be also present which make it more non-linear and what remains is the useful heat shown here what are the possible research topics in solar thermal collectors because you may remember that we are in the first uh, category what a researcher wants from solar thermal collector study and uh, this, uh, these are some of the research topics for example you can do research on effect of collector type flat plate heat pipe uh, evacuated tube collector or etc effect of different design of a specific collector type for example for the uh, uh, for the uh, for the flat plate collector uh, still there are different designs for example the plate may be um, strip or maybe uh, a complete uh, one piece of material plate or many other things uh, effect of materials can be considered for example the glass material the absorber material or other the insulation material effect of geometry of the collector effect of fluid for example it may be water or nano fluid or any other fluid new modeling methods exertion analysis and much more are among the research topics uh, just to show you some of our oh, old research it may go to maybe eight or uh, six to eight years back but uh, it gives you an idea what are the research topics in collectors uh, you can uh, search for these topics and see in google scholar what are the uh, the papers who cited these papers then you can see 
uh, more research topics related to the same uh, topics shown here. For example, uh, this is um, a, a publication we had with by one of my students, Mr. Abdi, evacuated tube solar heat pipe collector model and associated tests. Here we modeled the heat pipe collector and did some experiments also to co compare these together. This is published in 2012. In Journal of Renewable and Sustainable Energy. In another research we made with one of uh, our students, Mr. Ahmadi, uh, we used graph and nanoplates to see what effect it has on collector efficiency. It has been published in 2016 in Energy Conversion and Management. And for example, here we did uh, a research on exergy analysis of flat plate collector and also exergy analysis of heat pipe collectors which are published in ISI journal as you can see here you do you can uh, search for the paper if you are interested to see what are the research topics okay going to the second application from a manufacturer viewpoint when a manufacturer manufacturer uh, may, um, produces a solar collector generally the main thing for the manufacturer it to calculate and report its efficiency. The efficiency of a collector, as you can see uh, here, can be calculated in this way. I will explain more. And here you can see a collector testing center, which I designed and manufactured uh, here in Tehran uh, some years back. Here you can see a collector which is installed here and by this device shown here or in this test lab the collector may be tested what when you want to test a device you cannot do it uh, based on your own desire it should be based on some international or accepted standards there are a lot of uh, standards for solar thermal collectors and solar water heaters you can see here some of them in australia new zealand in uh, arab region brazil canada canada china european union india international uh, and uh, there's a long list as you can see uh, it still continues but the main standard for testing solar thermal collectors is ISO 9806 uh, the new uh, edition is to uh, 2017 uh, the topic is the title is solar energy solar thermal collector test methods here the standard says uh, how to test a solar thermal collector generally there are two types of tests for a solar collector when it is produced the first is performance test which uh, generally refers to the efficiency the useful energy and something like this and durability tests the list um, is shown here exactly based on ISO 9806 you can see that the tests are performance tests, for example, thermal performance tests determining the efficiency, determining the heat capacity, the time constant of the collector, pressure drop test, incident angle modifier, and um, incident angle modifier actually refers to the effect of uh, incident angle. Uh, you may remember incident angle was the angle between the beam radiation and the normal to the surface. No, the question is what will be the effect um, when, for example, the incident angle is not zero. It means that the beam is not uh, normal to the collector. What is its effect? There is a modifier generally, which is called incidence angle modifier. And there are a lot of durability tests. Let's have a look on durability tests, which are. Okay. Uh, there are also standards for solar term solar water heaters you you just remember that solar water heaters are different from solar collectors actually solar water heater is the combination of solar collector plus tank and other equipment components of the system uh, the main standard for testing solar term solar water heaters is is on nine um, no, 9459 and also 9459-5 uh, and dash 2. These are the two main standards for testing solar water heaters. Again, the solar water heater combination is installed in the test lab. The water is in third uh, outlet and some sophisticated actually procedures are done to determine its uh, it's uh, performance. Uh, there are different tests, for example, overnight heat loss test to see what is the heat loss uh, coefficient for the storage tank, test to determine degree of mixing in the storage tank when uh, 
the hot water is drawn off as you can see here they determine for example how the temperature of the tank will be decreased when you draw hot water and a lot of tests you may are referred to the uh, standard shown here for more details where the, to test the collectors and solar water heaters there are two test methods indoor and outdoor indoor means that you test the collector indoor outdoor means that the collector or solar water heater is installed outdoor here you can see the indoor test with sun simulator uh, there are lamps you can see them and here the collector is installed the lamps actually simulate uh, the sun uh, uh, and there are advantages and limitations you can see here for this uh, method of test also it is possible to test a real sun in outdoor and uh, this is the uh, collector test center that I designed and, um, uh, and manufactured it is the first uh, and actually the only um, test center for solar thermal collectors and solar water heaters in Iran here you can see the collector here you can see the pyranometer temperature uh, ambient air temperature wind velocity meter and the fan here is actually to produce a constant flow of air over the collector because um, uh, actually these are all based on the standard because the procedure is clearly specified in the standards and you should follow it if you want to design a system it is a actually a very complicated uh, combination if you are interested uh, in another presentation I may introduce the uh, solar collector testing but uh, what uh, I want you to know at the moment is uh, what we do here actually as I told you in this the main thing in the uh, you may remember that there are two there were two columns performance test durability test in the performance test one of the tests was um, let me show you in the performance test one of the tests for thermal performance test in the thermal performance test generally efficiency is one of the main items which should be calculated it can be calculated as shown here and dot is which is the flow of water entering the collector here is measured by a device by flow meter cpu is calculated based on water temperature to and ti inlet temperature to the collector and outlet temperature are measured a collect ac as i told you before is the collector area gross or absorber aperture and gt on the plane of collector as you can see here is measured by a pyranometer and finally so I will be reported in collector data sheet here you can see a sample data sheet for a flat plate collector actually this is just part of the data sheet it may include some more data let's have a short review for example this is a model of the collector uh, as you can see here there are three areas overall area which is the gross area absorber area and aperture area so from now on whenever you see these in a catalog you understand what are the meaning other dimensions weight absorber type uh, absorber capacity this is the, the capacity uh, of the absorber coating is selective coating you may remember that uh, I explained it the thickness of it absorption coefficient and this is interesting you can see that when the collector coating is selective then the absorption uh, coefficient is much more than the emission the absorption is high while the emission is low maximum working pressure heat transfer medium certificate which the collector have certificate is also a very important parameter I don't have time to explain it no and other details you can see here uh, I may show you also some other data sheet for example you have here another data sheet from a collector you can see that this is a flat plate collector here you can see some explanation description and again here you can see that this is the technical specification there are two models here again you can see that gross area aperture area you have here overall height width depth weight fluid capacity just uh, one interesting point is that see the capacity in liter uh, for the collector is not so high it is just uh, below two liters type of connections um, ah, this is the point that I want to show you and is important you can see here you can see that you have a 0 R1 and R2 
A2. Let, let me explain those later, uh, just a few slides ahead, I'll explain it to you. Okay, uh, and the third view, third viewpoint is from an engineer viewpoint, when you, for example, want to install a collector or water heater, solar water heater, or buy a solar water heater or solar collector, uh, these are important. The engineer or end user need efficiency formula or care to determine the output energy of the collector because for us as a user, for example, when we want to use a collector, I'm not interested in the, for example, heat transfer formula or something like this. I want just to know uh, what is the efficiency of the collector and based on the input energy, how much energy it will produce. Here is the key. You may remember that a ta was reported in collector data sheet. Okay, ETA is reported in collector data sheet. Now, for us as a user, we are interested in useful energy, so it is just enough to multiply ETA by GT, which is the incident solar radi irradiance, multiplied by the collector area. Again, I just want to emphasize that you should be careful what AC you are using, or what AC the manufacturer is referring to you know if the efficiency based on for example the gross area you should multiply it by gross area okay so this is this is the key formula here in third category when you have eta just multiply it by the product shown here to find the useful energy generally the collector manufacturers show efficiency as a function of normalized temperature difference either in graphical form as you can see here or in a formulated form both have the same meaning generally the graphical form is simpler to use because when you calculate tm minus ta over g uh, sorry uh, then go up and then to the left you can find a top here tm is uh, i don't know why you can not see it tm is equal to the is the average of input and out, uh, inlet and outlet temperature to the collector if you have the formula or the coefficient shown here like the data sheet just we saw uh, just put the values here and also at a zero a1 and a2 from the manufacturer in the formula to calculate the efficiency um, okay. Um, just some notes. Either the curve or coefficients of the efficiency equation, curve is this, this is the equation, are reported in manufacturer data uh, sheets, or both may be shown. In some cases, both of them are shown. User may find collector efficiency knowing the following inlet or mean water temperature, solar irradiance, G, and ambient temperature. Then you can simply calculate collector efficiency either from the curve or from the formula. The other important note here is that as solar irradiance, G, ambient temperature, TA, very true the minutes of the hour and hours of the day days of the months and months of the year calculating solar collector efficiency is of dynamic nature why because collector efficiency is depending on is dependent on ambient air temperature and solar radiation and all these parameters are varying through the day from sunrise to sunset so it is not correct just to say a collector has an efficiency of, for example, 60, 50, 40 percent without considering water temperature, solar irradiance, and amb ambient temperature. This is very important. Actually, this may be, uh, uh, what to say, the golden uh, sentence uh, here, and I ask you kindly to read it uh, multiple times to understand it. That's an example using the collector efficiency curve. This is, uh, for example, suppose that this is a sample efficiency curve from data sheet of the collector manufacturer. We want to know what is the efficiency of this collector for the following condition. When inlet temperature is 60, outlet is 80, ambient is 10, and G at the place, of, at the uh, surface, surface plane of collector is 600 watt per square meter. Please note that G, this is on the plane of the collector, not on the horizontal. I ask you kindly to pause the video and solve it. Whenever solved, then you can go replay it to see the answer in the next 
its light. Okay, I hope you found it. First, you should calculate Tm, which is the average of inlet and outlet. Then calculate the normalized temperature difference. You have all the data. It is 0.1. Come to the graph, go up to left, and you can find here the efficiency, which is near 0.3 or 30%. So in this way, you can find the collector efficiency. And once more, I can say, I want to say you the golden formula or golden sentence that if the inlet temperature varies, if the outlet temperature varies, if ambient temperature is varied, and if solar radiation is varied, then the collector efficiency will be also different. The next topic of importance is comparing efficiency curve of different collector types. Here you can see the a group of collector efficiency curve for evacuated tube solar collectors at the right, glazed flat, flat plate collector uh, in the middle, and unglazed collector at the left. Uh, the reason why you have, for example, five, six curves is that they may belong to different manufacturers, but you can see that the trend for all them in flat plate category, in unglazed and in vacuum tube category are the same. Look at the picture. As you can see, <coughs> sorry, this speech. As you can see, and I told you before, the greater the slope of the curve, like this, the more severe the decrease in efficiency with increasing value of horizontal axis or normalized temperature difference. You may remember that I told you that if the slope of the curve is high, it shows that the heat loss coefficient is high. So when the temperature difference is between the water and water in the collector and uh, the ambient temperature is increased, then you will lose the heat more quickly. So you can see that uh, here, unglazed collectors are not appropriate for high temperature, high temperature differences or low uh, solar irradiance. Uh, one important point and interesting point here is that while the collector efficiency for unglazed one are less than the other two ones generally in, uh, in this area from here, uh, but here you can see that their efficiency is much more. Not much more is more. What do you think about that? Why, why here, at, uh, when the uh, temperature difference is low at these areas, then the efficiency of unglazed collector is less than the other two ones? What do you think? Okay, the answer is that uh, as the unglazed collector has no glazing, then um, all the incident energy to the collector surface will reach the absorber plate, unlike the calculation uh, that we did before, and there were GT and S, if you remember, and they were different by a factor of tau alpha. There is no tau alpha here for unglazed collector, but when the temperature difference is increased, it's effect will be vanished and you can see that their efficiency will be decreased too much and in the next step of flat plate collectors and finally vacuum tube collectors as um, as as you can guess uh, the less uh, the, the least actually uh, heat loss coefficient and the slope as you can see are less the reason i explained in the video of the previous lesson look uh, have a look at the video in the previous lesson. The highest reduction of efficiency curve is for unglazed collector, last reduction for vacuum tube with increasing required water temperature, Tm, decreasing ambient temperature, TOA, and lower radiation intensity, G, ETC collector efficiency is higher. So this brings us to the conclusion shown here that if you have low temperature application like the swimming pool heating, unglazed collectors are the best one if you have domestic hot water heating or space heating in this area generally then both evacuated and flat plate collectors may be used but um, check for the price for example or for example if you are here there may be no difference but if you are at the right end of the border here then vacuum tube collectors may be better and if you have a high temperature application like process heat, like solar thermal cooling, like solar desalination of some types of thermal desalination, then it can be seen that 
certainly vacuum tube collectors are best choice because the collector the flat plate collectors may still be used but their efficiency are much less now uh, let's have an example to see if you understood what I said uh, using below curve this is the same curve as before what is the best collector type for the following application in an application TM is 80 degree the average plate temperature the water temperature in let and outlet ambient is a cooled ambient zero and um, you have approximately a low solar irradiance of 500 watt per square meter which collect which of these three collectors are best suited for this application please uh, pause the video solve the example and then replay it to see if you answered it cor correctly or not okay as you can see you should calculate first the value of the horizontal axis tm minus ta over g 80 0 500 it is 0.16 come to the graph 0.16 go up and then you can see that both flat plate and vacuum tube may be used but if flat plates are used then the efficiency will be will be low but using vacuum tube collectors the efficiency will be higher so the answer is vacuum tube collector is best suited for this type of application okay this is the end of lesson time the 10 uh, just i wanted to show you uh, here uh, the collector uh, it was unfinished actually if you remember this was the flat plate collector and uh, we were here okay i stopped here you can see that in the collector uh, data sheet the manufacturer give, give you the zero loss coefficient eta zero first order coefficient a1 and second order coefficient a2 values if you remember so this manufacturer is showing you the efficiency in a formula actually it, it gives you the coefficient of the formula let me show you again uh, you had a formula for the collector efficiency if you remember uh, sorry here you can see that collector efficiency may be shown either in a graphical form in, or in a uh, uh, or in the form of an equation and the equation have three coefficients you can see it has zero a1 a2 and the manufacturer may give you the value of the equation that coefficient as you can see here this is another data sheet from another manufacturer for example a solar this is the data sheet for a catalog or brochure for a flat plate collector here you can see that there are for example three models gross area height thickness aperture area absorber it uh, says for example what's the material what's the uh, absorptivity what is the emission emissivity the glazing material thickness the frame insulation fluid content of the collector recommended flow rate this is also interesting actually it's the manufacturer says tells you that this is the recommended flow rate for example if this collector has an area of 1.9 square meter then uh, it says that for each square meter the flow rate is 0.25 to 1 liter per minute this is the recommended flow rate uh, transfer fluid maximum working on ah, here you can see zero loss coefficient at all heat loss coefficient uh, a1 and a2 this is at a zero and this is a1 this is a2 and other data you can see here okay and by this we reach to the end of uh, lesson 10 thank you for being with me take care and bye